I, uh, I had, uh, you know, I'm planning, uh, I'm planning a little bit longer time, but, uh, you know, that'll come around the 14th of November. So we still have some time to get that alpha out, you know, although that, uh, this is, this is very exciting stuff. Um, I was just, I was just putting together a high level map of where we are and where we're headed and what we're trying to do. And, um, so, um, we are at this point here, my friend. I had I always try to redraw the map because why not, right? So here's this guy. This is where we are. All of these things that are in green are done. All of these things that are in green are done. Um, I've been having this thought about, um, in addition to offering, you know, a raw uh, O data query outside of the O query service. Hey, what do you think about, you know, adding another one in here? Another one in here that I want to call SQL SQL service. And this SQL service will basically talk to pretty much the same broker except that it's not going to try to convert it to O data. Instead, it'll just ship out the SQL. So you have the option of you know, you're sending an O data, you're getting back as an expression, you send in an expression, you can get it back as an O data or SQL. So we're offering multiple options in terms of API um, uh, offerings here. What do you think about that? Yeah, I kind of wondered about that because my thinking was that if you think about what O data is to the world, it's mm -hmm. it's really just kind of like um it's almost a, it's like a query language isn't it that's right so my thinking was that why don't we offer queries in all kind of forms right go ahead, go ahead. yeah yeah literally that like you can put in a query and you can get out a query in a different language and mm -hmm. so anything that's considered to be a query language is sort of valid to us within the context of this library which That's makes right. me wonder whether or not it should even be called OData Neo. It sh surely it should be like Query Neo, <laughs> of which you know OData is one of the things that it supports. But <laughs> my thinking was that you could kind of just like you could put a query in in any format and get a query out in any format. That's right. But the, That's true. But the translation between say systems. So if I had two applications that were talking to one another. I'd use the library to produce um, an OData string potentially and transmit that to another instance of this running in the other app. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, you know, translate that into an expression tree and consume it or something. Um, so my thinking was that, yeah, providing that kind of, for lack of a better expression, the Babelfish type, you know, universal translator for queries, that seems to me to be one of the key goals of the, the library right right which basically means two things my dear friend that means that so apis that we can offer let's just think about this out loud right um apis that we want to be able to offer you're sending in the original one was just odata query that turns into write an expression and we also wanted an expression that turns into an O data query, right? And now I'm thinking, wait a second, I also want an O data query that turns into SQL query. And I want the opposite. I want to send in a SQL query mm -hmm. that turns into an O data query. Am I missing anything in here? A SQL query that turns into an expression. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But that's outside of OData then. That's what you were just saying, right? Yeah, this is what I was saying. It, it's at this point it becomes less about OData and more just about but, but entity universal framework already, Yeah, but entity framework already gives you that. If you give it a SQL query, it'll give you back whatever you want, right? However, yeah. to your to your point though. That might be how we implement <laughs> it, to be fair. <laughs> yes. However though, there are there are the dapper folks you have to kind of keep everyone in the community included 
in a way. So there are the dapper folks that will go and say, hey, dude, we didn't use the entity framework, but we heard about this super awesome library that you have where we can give it SQL and it will give us expressions. So yeah. w I'll tell you this. H here's This one is for free. Let me do this. Um, I'll, I'll do this. I'll go and say here is a SQL query to an expression. And we already we already have expression to SQL query, right? We already have that one. Expression to SQL query, right? This one is by necessity because we have to. It's like our middle ground, right? Um, we also figured out OData query. Did we figure out OData query to an expression? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then expression to OData query, yes. And then we have a, because it goes to SQL and then SQL hands it over. Uh, this OData query to SQL query, that's the one that we want. By the way, this on the left input, on the right output. So yeah. um, so we've, we've got that third one, but we've got it as like middle of the pipeline, right? So what you're right. thinking is to take it out of the middle of the pipeline Offer it. and make yep. it its own thing. That's right. Yeah. So, so... And then the opposite, right? Give me the the beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't violate any contracts because I'm giving you raw strings. I'm getting back raw strings. No harm, no foul. I don't know anything nice. about what you're doing, right? So that so, that raises some interesting questions for me as well because I was thinking, like, what if we could um, think of it like an I enumerable of some query provider, right? right. I mm -hmm. give it a string, like you say, and I get back a string. Uh, the one exception, I think, being expression trees, which are not really strings as such. They're, you know, it's, it's an object hierarchy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But in theory, what you could do is you could standardize the interface um, such that, you know, expression trees is kind of its own case for C sharp specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, it's a language. There's always the Java thing. folks that will come in and, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, so my thinking is that like that's kind of a given in the .NET implementation is that you're going to have this case that you can convert anything to an expression tree and then from an expression tree to whatever it is. Take it to SQL and get it as old. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so my thinking was could we build out the services? So when we put like the orchestration on top of this, mm. could, could we... Um, build it out such a way that it can take like a collection of providers that can provide different types of queries and an expression service essentially um and then if you want the expression back or you want to consume that you can or if you want it back in some other format then you can just tell the orchestration that so then when we wrap it up we've got our exposure layer i'm thinking we're going to have something like i don't know a uh, let's say we've got an expression tree, you're going to have like a dot two SQL method on that, which is just an extension method that just calls into different parts of the oh, infrastructure that we've built out. That, that's the client, yes. The client is going to be able to offer, like the client is an exposure layer and this exposure layer can be a an extension method. It doesn't yeah. matter how you're offering it, right? It's just an exposure layer. Like, I don't want people to think, because this this has been a discussion with, with a couple other folks as well, you know, be like, where, where does, you know, um, uh, where does the the idea of extension methods live? You know, well, mostly in libraries, but also, you know, I, if you're writing an extension method, it's very likely to be in a library, right? Something that you want to offer on a larger scale. But I've yeah. seen people do this crazy thing where they go and say, no, I'm going to create an extension method on, they, they, they're arguing with me, right? So they're telling me, hey, dude, you know, okay, you said the model itself can't carry validations, right? And we want the model to know about the validations as we transfer it between multiple distributed systems. Here, this argument, it's crazy. And we can't have these services everywhere to validate the models. So what if we built extension methods that attach, see how they see how they're holding the kind of the stick from the metal. And they're saying, well, it's not really a service, but it's also not really in the model. So And then I got angry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So th this comes down to like the standard meeting the real world, doesn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, people want like 
fluent APIs they want, like really clean APIs that they can interact with. So to my mind, um, and I've, I said this to, to Callum just this morning, actually, I said, mm. look, you know, in reality, what you want is anything that's an exposure mm -hmm. should be treated much like a broker in the we have no code in it as such we just pass mm -hmm. through our calls mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you've got things like extension methods the extension mm -hmm. method literally just instantiates the the an orchestration yep. service and calls it yeah it does yep. nothing more than that. that's it that's it right there exactly so as long as we're doing that then to my mind we can break up the functionality or call into it however we see fit in yep. how we write those extension methods yep absolutely 100 percent 100 percent. i agree i couldn't agree more in fact actually by the way exceptions with the x is nothing but a bunch of extension methods you know that gives you like we, we've even added some things like i want to know the source like i never talked to you about this before but you know imagine this this goes back to the whole conversation about internal mock and all that uh, there's still some difficulty some things that we have to solve but one of the things that we're going into now see how we focus on exceptions and we make sure that we handle them properly and all that kind of stuff you know now exceptions has a an extension method and i think i put that in it in like three four months ago but i'm still trying to advocate for this to tell me where the exception is coming from so i want to know the origin because you could have a service exception that's coming from your dependency as much as from your current service a generic exception right so how do you tell the difference right how do you know the difference right in in exceptions i started doing something like this watch this look at this so there's odata neo don't don't you throw specific exceptions from the service that has the problem so yeah, presumably yeah. that's how you would tell right in in your case yeah but think about the generic exception is it coming from the service or your dependency like imagine so, imagine so what, that... I, what i mean is like if you've got a service and then you've got a dependency that's got a service right mm -hmm. they throw different types of exceptions they don't they don't ever throw the same type of exception do they that that's right but what if your broker is throwing something like out of memory exception which falls into that generic exception then presumably block. the foundation that sits on top of it catches that and turns right. it into a whatever foundation service exception Right. right. What if the foundation doesn't know or doesn't account for it because you don't know what it is? Uh, sounds like a gap in your testing, right? <laughs> exactly. So we're trying to tighten that up, right? It, you know, again, just so you understand, we're not really trying to compete with anyone. We're competing against ourselves for the most part. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know who did it this way. This, this is really stupid. Hold on. Didn't you mentioned this the other day about like just having some kind of yeah failed dependency so yeah watch this i can now go in here and say when watch this when exception is from or is not from you don't see it but it's here and you get to to determine where the origin is like you can go and say name of and then you go and say, hey, well, this is coming from my, I don't know, expression broker or whatever the case may be. See what I'm that's, saying? That's cool, yeah. See, there's there's some really advanced, but the problem is, is you're going to laugh at this one. Uh, <laughs> so the, the problem with that is that when you mock, when you mock a certain dependency, when you throw that exception, you lose the origin. The origin is gone because it's not really coming from the same origin. <laughs> That's right. Oh, <laughs> uh, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so how do you test it, right? Exactly. Yeah. See, see, you know, and, and, and some people like tell me to well, what is the requirement that's driving this? And I said devotion, quality, making sure we're building high standardized systems. You know, I mean. Yeah. I could settle for what we have and say great, or we could continue to evolve because we know there's always a, a, a an area for improvement. So, in in other words, I'm inviting you to write a new mock library with me. <laughs> just, <laughs> go, go, you go. just hate me, don't you? That's what I mean. just, just, <laughs> just keep throwing things because, to be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, Paul. Like this this project, the standard universal. I'm starting to realize. 
our mocking sucks. Like, you know, this whole dot object thing is really disgusting. You know, mm -hmm. why are we doing that? Like, uh, like you're looking at these other, I also like, I also like this to do thing. I need to write a library called to do.net. And instead of writing your function, you know, to throw not implemented exception, because it's not really an exception, that's not really an error. It's, it's very intentional in a way. Yeah. Right. So, so if you think about it, I mean, whoever came up with that, that's, that's the thing, dude, you know, we're learning about these different languages and different technologies so we can bring that knowledge into, and then one day I'll just, you know, you know, shuffle around Roslyn and make the standard language, you know, so it's not really a C sharp, but you so, know. Well, one of the things I often talk about in the community is like, there's this B2B thing that I'm working on, which is very specific to like what, what my company does so obviously there's only so much i can share with regards to the, the code because that's considered like corporate intellectual property. Here, yeah yeah mm. but there's this this core piece that i built long before i joined the company and it's you know it's been worked on since and it's been improved but that does need a, a rebuild and when, when i first kind of mentioned it to you i kind of likened it to to sharepoint but what i want to do is break it down I don't like products like SharePoint. I think they're too big, they're unwieldy, they're too complicated, and it makes them harder to understand. And one of the things that, for me, makes the standard so particularly appealing is that every problem can be broken down into all the, the minute pieces, and then you can put each of those pieces together. So you can still have really big, complicated solutions if you so choose. But it takes all of those component parts and just gives you all of the raw details that are under the bonnet. And so what I was hoping to do was turn my core infrastructure into several sub projects, essentially, that I want to fully open source. And the, the first piece of that, obviously, is the, the security. security. Everyone's waiting. Yeah, everybody's waiting me, on that. You know, by the by the way, people who don't even engage in the discussions be like, when is this poll guy? I'm like, go ask him. Why are you asking me? You know, just go ask the guy. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> like, people are like, you know, we could totally use that. By the way, just you might have just came across I guess you know, necessity is the source of innovation or something like that. You know, I guess you came across a need. And that's the beauty about building enterprise systems, is that a lot of people are so happy with their hello world, you know, calculator apps. And then the <laughs> folks that, so these are the loud ones, right? Because they can do a turnaround and they can keep up with social media and all that in a, like a 30 second video, they can write a program and yay, we are C-sharp programmers. And then there is the enterprise systems folks who have discussions like these, that the ones that you and I are having, but behind closed doors, like they're working on something super important right yeah. and they can't even actually have that conversation and if you go to them and be like hey dude can you explain this can i inter interview you because believe me when i tell you i tried to pull people out and they'll be like i don't even remember what we did see this has so, been one of my my biggest headaches right and particularly in and this i think this is why we get on so well is because like when you get to our level somewhere between a, a senior and a, and a principal engineer that you can't talk to anyone about anything because anyone at that level is undoubtedly always working on stuff behind closed doors. It's always yeah. intellectual property. Yeah. So my plan with my, my core infrastructure was to say, look, everybody's got some form of like content management system, document management system, some accounting product, some workflow engine, right? And the, the pieces that I've built ultimately solve those problems so my thinking was look these are generic enough problems that everyone can relate to them so why not turn it into a fully open source enterprise grade solution that we build out you and me could build it out together potentially as you know content for your channel potentially yeah. um and then the the github repos that kind of ultimately come from that will say look guys this is how it's done and if you've got a question about how we did a particular piece there's a video for that so we recorded that's, a live that, session yep on. yep that's 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 it right there that's it right so, there mm -hmm. but by, by the way just just so you know paul like the most of our sessions it's exactly what you just said we go through and discuss a certain topic right you could 
see if, if you read my last blog post it talks exactly about that how do you maximize the value out of everything you're doing right you could just do the work so you and i could just sit behind closed doors and build odata right that's yeah, yeah. value that's value one right but what if we recorded it and shared it with the world so now you're extracting higher value out of it because you're not just doing the work right and learning you're actually teaching people things and then number three you're actually delivering a product so you see how you're extracting you know values out of that and you're making friends along the way which is basically the highest priority for me just make friends talk to people that are super smart and see if you can kind of gauge their interest anyway not not to derail from the from the main thing i want to i want to see i want to if if i could just today come up with a basic idea i want to know so, uh -huh, go ahead. part of the reason why i'm kind of looking at the the odate and neo project the way that i'm looking at it is i'm thinking about it as you have some query string in and you want some query string or an expression tree out mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so my thinking is that there are n number of um query formats essentially that mm -hmm. can come from this right so mm -hmm. like even when you look at like sql right there's microsoft sql and then there's like my sql mm -hmm. so there's different kinds of sql query right mm -hmm. so my thinking was that this is a problem of um if you think about it i'm going to call into some service and mm -hmm. there's a number of pro providers that can provide the output query behind that Right. This relates to one of the reasons why I haven't published my security model stuff, mm -hmm. because there's a number of security providers that would provide authentication. Mm -hmm. And I kind of within the standard, I don't know what the appropriate way just yet to, to model that kind of problem out, because the standard is very strict about numbers of dependencies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my thinking is that in any given situation that it's always there's, there's always a fixed number of dependencies right there's an input and there's an output format so your chain is always going to be a fairly straight chain mm -hmm. but the thing that fills that chain will vary depending on context so if i want a microsoft sql query out then i need some kind of microsoft sql query service if i want a mysql query out then i I need something that probably has exactly the same interface. So it looks the same, but it produces slightly different SQL. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think this is this is the problem with like um, single sign-on services and all, or particularly for authentication in, in particular, um, is I want to find a way of modeling out um, OAuth 2 type scenarios such that this is what we can do on the back end. But right. I didn't know the kind of like the right way to ask you that question, essentially. I mean, so. I mean, there's also, you know, a potential for. Uh, I, I, like I said to you last night, you know, I really love the idea of that you're you're basically, you know, re reincarnating the idea of serverless serverless architecture, but within a one component, right? Because you're only lighting up the services, you know, that you care about based on the request that's oh, coming in. Oh, the, the eventing discussion. Yeah, I've, we should probably have a separate call on that because that's going to get deep. Standard <laughs> st standard discussion session is tomorrow, dude, 7 a.m. So just, you know, hop in. You know, this is why I created that venue. So we can, I feel like there's a lot of topics that we need to talk about. And while we're doing that, we're producing things on the side. Levent came out. LACU is about to come out. You know, we keep producing internal mocks. Since I started this whole thing, internal mock exceptions, all of these things, I used to just sit back in the dark and just come up with a 10-minute YouTube video and say, hey, here's a library. Deal with it. Right? Now we're actually uh, uh, t uh, making... By the way, just so you know, just an idea that hit me last night. Uh, Odata Neo, amongst just very few projects, is probably one of the not only if not only uh, uh the only project in the history of tech industry that's recorded every single interaction of how it got to where it is like like find me on the internet a recording of a project that actually recorded every single little interactions between the engineers all the little 
arguments, little jokes, everything else. Odata can be, you know, I'm going to reach to these Guinness folks and tell them, hey, the only project in the software history that actually recorded every single little detail, although that some people reached out to me and said, it seems like there is a blind spot, like there is a, a, a gap there between certain things. And I think that's was that was before when people were like, oh, let me just push the code without us getting on a session. You know, they're missing the point, right? You know, what's the point? If you're going to go on the side and do the thing, you know, you know, what is this all about, right? Anyway, hear me out. We can discuss the eventing part in a, in, in a different session. The one thing I wanted to kind of hear and see, do you, do you feel like you have any objection of rolling out a SQL service? Because we're going to go r roll out a SQL service, which really pretty much talks to SIM broker, but it has a completely different purpose. Right. Yeah, I mean, I would I would suffix with it um, suffix suffix it with, um, but just to say, hey, don't just think of it as a generic SQL service. Should we call it O SQL? Um, think of it as Microsoft SQL, because I can see, like I said, a scenario where my SQL ends up being put in there somewhere as well. No, 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 no. Hear me out. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna we might develop a library on the side that is a converter. That basically takes in a an OData query and a provider of some type, and then gives you back the SQL. Right now we're in the .NET world. You know, I I don't even know where uh, what was his name, Ethan. Yeah, I didn't I haven't talked to him in a while, but we need to kind of link up with him. He shows up every now and then in the community, but we need to talk to this guy about how we can convert OData Neo into a Java thing because the Java implementation of this thing is bad <laughs> they have to build the the, the the they have to build the the entity model themselves by hand the edm model by hand I mean, to be fair i i've often said to to sam when i've given him feedback that it feels to me like i write a lot of code to build out an odata model yeah um but i, I like the idea of odata having something akin to like an efdb context so you'd have like an api context that was pretty that... genius if you like you you're basically yeah. initializing a sql well it's not really a sql server you figure it out your way around the entity framework right at some point we just, yeah. in point in time we're just gonna go extract that piece so we don't have to work around the connection string and all that hear me out no no no. i was thinking at the, at the odata level so you you define a new api content or a type that derived from api context and then you'd mm -hmm. add sets into it api sets and then you just say hey generate me my odata model from that right and i'm thinking whatever the code is for doing that is going to be exactly the same in java as it would be for c sharp yeah of course 100 percent. that's that's the point yeah i want to standardize standardize standard Standardized. i can't speak today it, you, you lost it it's over you forgot <laughs> english son i made an english man forget his english that's crazy yeah i spent too much time around americans that's it right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one sec okay Sorry, a nice. daughter wants McDonald's for dinner, so okay. I had to approve. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, my thinking was if we can standardize model building, um, that might be something that ultimately we could feed into like an EF generation package later on, and it's um, coinciding API packages. So my thinking was that like bigger picture stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it as Microsoft has this um, rest tier thing, don't they? It's mm -hmm. huge. Um, and to my mind, I've looked at that and I've gone, why is there so much in it? Like, what does it do? <laughs> why is it so complicated, right? But if, like, we can have all of the pieces built out, um, then people can see what actually goes into, like, spinning up such complex API um, and all the, the services that sit behind them as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a whole ton of like projects that I've wanted to do for so much time, and it's just uh, this. This so is it, Paul. Like, like by by the way, just so you know, just for a lot of people that are because when I started the standard translations projects, a lot of people came to me and said, "Hey, I'm feeling fatigue. I don't feel like going on and all that." And um, don't do things on your own. 
you know, you're going to get worn out unless unless you're you have very high discipline. Like, you know, if you have very, very high discipline and you're willing to just put in the hours and push through and get something out the door. Great. Right. But some of these projects. Right. This is how I be, I come to kind of keep pushing through. We've been working on this for almost when was the first video? Oh, data Neo video. Let me show you. The very few first sessions ago, you said we'd done like sixty plus, right? So yeah, like, what, so, so one or lot. two a week. So it was over a year ago, easily. Probably over a year ago, isn't it? So I have the. Yeah. Where is my uh, this Odata Odata Neo? Uh, there it is. So we have, so our full list. I know you can't see it, but um, the very first video that we have is was published on exactly a year ago exactly a year ago right and that was when i proposed it to you know the identity team that's that's sam and michael pezzo and these folks i think there was a i think there was also i remember his name he's he's if you're watching you're a great guy I just can't remember the name it's monday morning but you know um that's when i just proposed the project literally again i'm telling you this is one of the if not the only project in the software history that actually recorded from the moment I came up with the idea and started talking about it. Anyway, hear me out. So here is... Uh, we need to do more stuff like this. Like the enterprise-grade oh, yeah. stuff in particular, not just like building apps. Like everybody's doing that these days, you know? Yeah. Hello World this and, you know, schools or whatever it that, is, that, you know, that's... students <laughs> and courses, but apparently, like proper apps. <laughs> apparently that's what people on, on Reddit are saying. They're saying, listen, you know, I recommend going to Hassan Habib's channel. However, just so you know, it's not kitty stuff. You're not going to go there and find him saying, oh, three ways you can do string interpolation. You're not going to see that nonsense. I mean, it's there, but it's a part of a little nice, you know, thing on the side that we talk about while we're building something more interesting. All right, hear me yeah, out. I, I really want to get into like the deep stuff, like all this stuff we've been talking about with security and eventing. These are the real big problems, like uh, enterprise applications at scale. Like, how do you solve the problem of scale? Mm. That that's the stuff that people care about. Oh, how do how should I build out my infrastructure so that it it can handle anything? You know. Right. Right. Let's do the SQL service then. So it's I'm gonna call it IO SQL because it's not SQL, it's just a part of SQL service. And what we expect this guy to do is that it's gonna take an O data <clears throat> sorry, it's gonna take an expression. You know, it's gonna take an expression and give you no no not an expression. It's gonna take a an O data query and bring it back as SQL. So it'll turn it back into SQL, right? So just, just as a as a reminder, I need to post this somewhere, I swear to God. So as a reminder, we are building this guy. I keep thinking I should build out a blog, and then I keep thinking oh, I haven't got the time for that. <laughs> I, I have a blog. I post on it very often, though. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but when you publish books on Amazon, you can actually hook up your blog to it. So if you publish books, you can literally just hook up your blog to it and Amazon will show your blog posts, which is pretty cool. I don't know if, you know. That's cool. Yeah, yeah that's that's really sweet because um, it basically says, okay, this is this author and he's interested in this topic. Why don't you go ahead? Let's see. Uh, what is it? Amazon, Hassan, Habib. I think that's me. Yeah, there you go. Look, look, my blog posts, they show up automatically in here. See? Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. It's pretty yeah. sweet, right? What's, what's, what's cooler than all of this is that they're putting me right next to Robert C. Martin. That's Uncle Bob. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I like that. Nice. <laughs> it, it goes back to that point that, like, the pool. Oh, my God. And in... Martin Fowler and Sam Newman, too. What the heck? Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, it goes back to that point that the pool we're in, although the wider development community is like there's millions of us, mm -hmm. there's only maybe a few hundred that are actively like progressing and like those principles that are proper entrepreneurs and pushing things forward and you know, coming up with the new ideas and actually making things happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just, it, you know, backs that whole principle up, doesn't it? Yeah, that's true. 
Okay, so what? So just out of curiosity, if I go to the OQuery service, this service took in an expression and returned an OData query. So it basically went and returned OData query. Instead, we want someone something to take an expression and returns a a SQL query, which is a very basically a lighter version of this, much much lighter version of this, right? So I'm gonna go here and say public. So yeah, you want to take a copy of that service, delete all of the public methods, make all the private ones public. That's your interface. <laughs> right. Except except that we're gonna we're gonna have to test drive it. <laughs> expression. Uh, you know, this is my expression. Yeah, and it's supposed to return actually a string, right? So this is string. String. There we go. Okay, I need to sit down for this. Uh, I need, well, it's very much the same uh, broker. So that's going to be an easy one because that broker is already implemented. Let's do this, Paul. Let's see. So here is my, my service. So this is OSQL service. And these guys are uh, public interface. And then here's IO SQL service, control period, implementation. And then we also want private read only I uh, 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 query broker, I SQL query broker, nice. And then control period on this will generate the constructor and then clean this up by the way just our fat arrow capabilities you know in c sharp is supreme i i yearn for it when i'm working with other languages I was playing with java yesterday just show people how java by the way java is just basically c sharp is just for the most part but um some of these nice little tricks that we have in c sharp makes the engineering experience so much more fun dude so much I think the language fun. has had what two decades of time put into it now and, and that refinement is really starting to show like when when i show people um I, I i regularly get developers come to me and they say oh have you seen this block of code and they show me some code in like java or python or something like, oh, okay uh -huh. and then i um <clears throat> i write the same block of code in c sharp and i'm like what do you think of this and they're like what does that do and i'm like it does exactly the same <laughs> pretty thing much the same thing yeah. and they're like <laughs> There's no way it can do all of that. There's so little of it. I'm like, try it. <laughs> and they, they get blown away. I remember like a, a friend of mine was doing like a university degree or something, and it took him something stupid, like 50 lines of code to like just read some text out of a file. And I went, he, here you go. Here's the equivalent C sharp one liner, you know? And he was like, no, no, surely not. And I went, try it. Just like run it. Like, because he had, I knew he had Visual Studio installed right. and stuff on his machine, right. and sure enough, it was just like, yeah, we, we spent like the next week of him going. I still can't believe that. I still can't believe that. <laughs> it is what it is. I it mean, is what it is. It's a beautiful language and it's a beautiful framework. <laughs> it's it's true, bro. That's true. Uh, SQL query mock. See that whole object thing? That's nonsense. Now you see other languages. I want to be able to go and say mock and then here is your uh, i sql query broker and we're done and i don't have to call this damn thing that's clean yeah that's better yeah. engineering experience i was talking to mabrook about this uh, sorry i think it was shut off shut off about this and he was like yeah dude we, we should totally do that I want to know how old i think it was like ef6 yeah. had um it has entity proxies it would generate mm -hmm. dynamic proxies when you enable proxying. I want to know how that works because the mock implementation that we would have would be pretty close to that essentially. Because it, all it does is it puts a wrapper around the actual type and generates mm. the wrapper code. Mm. And so like when you do, you know, setups or whatever, you're just generating code, right? And you're giving it mm -hmm. the code to generate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it can't be, surely it, like it's not, what I'm saying, I guess what I'm saying is it's not a problem that isn't already solved, right? Yep, 
Yep. Within the community somewhere, there's an answer to it. But, yep. Yeah. I get, bet that's one hell of a code base to try and go through. That EF is one of the things I'm scared to look at. That's 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 <laughs> that's, that's that's why we have Sam. Sam has like the appetite to actually go and dig into that and come back and tell us, oh, okay, here's you have to know like so so if you if you're an engineering lead you have to know the strengths and weaknesses of the people you're working with so when you're delegating or so you have to one of two things you want to hit the gears really hard so you rely on the people that have the experience and they really enjoy this but you also want to invest in the growth of your team so you start hitting on the weaknesses and say hey how come you're not building this this type of skill set so that's the that's me putting on my manager hat now and saying hey here's my engineering team study your team understand your team what are the things that uh, they're good at what are the things that they can improve at and utilize that you know every team has cowboys and mad scientists what are you going to do about that right so um anyway uh, i'm about as mad as they come <laughs> and then and then I, I told that to one of my uh previous leads and he said to me what about mad cowboys <laughs> i was like yeah that's that's uh <laughs> that's crazy um I I believe he misspelled the word entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good one, Paul. <laughs> anyway, here is as the... the... As they would like to be known. <laughs> also known as that guy that needs an axe put in into him after he's left <laughs> because he hacked something together and just doff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's hilarious! That's hilarious. Okay, uh, how did we actually create a random expression? Oh, we just mocked it like that. That's sweet. See, you could have something like that, but does it actually? Do you still have to call object on it? That's the problem, right? So, um, I guess not, dude. I guess not because look, you have the expression, but now you can't set up anything on it, and that's the problem, right? So that's that's problematic. So if you look at mock, I wonder if you can set up on a thing. Let's see, mock dot. So they have verify, which is pretty cool. And then you pass in the mock. So does that mean if I pass in the random expression, would it be happy? Nope. So somehow you have to keep, this is the crazy part about this. You need to create a pocket on that object that keeps in the actual mock instance, which is no time. Yeah, this is this is where the decorator pattern comes in handy, right? Because then you've got yeah. that that proxy that's that thin layer on top, and you can interact with the proxy, or you can interact with the object, and they're one and the same in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The proxy has effectively its own interface of sorts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Generated SQL query... I'm not yeah, quite right. sure how you'd you'd have to be careful about usage though, because like if you if you cast it to the underlying thing that you're proxying, then obviously the compiler is going to think that that's what it's got when you pass it into like a method or something. That's but right. But in the parent scope, when you define it, you know you've got that mock thing, right? So you can mm -hmm. pass that into things, but you can also interact with it in that context. But I mean, that's standard unit testing stuff, right? It's yep. It's very, very ago. straightforward. That's true. Yeah. So this is actual SQL query. This will be very easy, Paul. This is by far going to be the easiest thing you've ever done with me. <laughs> Input expression. <laughs> I still go back and watch some of these earlier sessions. It's just hilarious how, first of all, it's just people getting to know each other. Like this, a bunch of random people. And they're getting to know each other. And throughout the project, they're starting to learn more and more about each other. It's... um. <laughs> just, just... All, all we did is beat each other up until everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed they're still around in the community. They just okay. don't get involved anymore. Yeah, they're this. like, I get like scared my... of being picked on a live stream. Yeah. yeah, people are like, I don't want to be executed verbally on a public stream, so I'm just gonna stay behind and watch. By the way, some of these folks still reach out to me without naming names, you know, and they'd be like, Hey, I watched the session. Here's what. You know, I'm thinking, right? But they do want to go on <laughs> a public, a public <laughs> uh, uh, podcast. You know, 
I mean, Paul, to be honest with you, you know, we're brutal. We need to chill out a little bit, you know? I'm thinking about this, like, literally. <laughs> I, I, I like to think that, you know, I, I get as good as I give, basically. You know, I, I give people no, a but... lot of grief, and I get twice as much back, so I'm like, fine. <laughs> I deserved it. I have given it out in the first place. <laughs> someone <laughs> someone left a comment a couple of Odata sessions ago, and he said, wait a second, is Paul trying to find kindness? Is, did he just say, let's have kind words? What is he talking about? <laughs> I laughed so hard in this. That was hilarious. People fear thing. us actually being nice now. Is that the issue? <laughs> that's that, that's hilarious. Like people are like, where, since when did Paul start, you know, talking about, you know, um, uh, being nice? You know what I mean? That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Paul, get that test to pass, son. I don't have the whole day for you. Go. Oh, God. No, I've got to load things and stuff. Oh, God. my God. Are you kidding me, bro? I was totally I, I, not ready for that. You, you threw that at me. I need my cup of tea, bro. Let's go. You need your cup of tea, dude. Cup of tea. <laughs> cup of tea. Cup of tea. Right. You're gonna have to me. teach me the different accents in England, so I can. Cup of tea. No. Okay, question Who number says one. That anyway. Yeah, I always say cup of tea. Uh, window. Cup of tea. Put it in the uh, right. This one. This one you want. I think. Is I it... think so. Do you know Is what the branch name more? would be? It, it just look for O sequel. Uh, oh, we in a different branch now. Right, oh, of okay. course. Go back to master. We, you know the the last thing is over, man. You know we're we're making progress, we're chugging in. You know. I'm not used to that. Normally we just like give each other crap and then like move on. <laughs> right, here we go. That's that's a beautiful thing about all of this. You know, we get to just give each other crap, and at the end of the day, something comes from the other side. Still useful. People will take care of it. If they want to know the history of how it came to be, sure. If you don't <laughs> care. It's the one. That's the one. That's the one. So, so basically, Paul, I turned software engineering process into a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> right. So retrieve SQL query from an expression. So as literally saying, the easiest line of code you're ever going to write. Go. Uh, as I was saying, I think we already have it. So I can copy paste it from somewhere else, can't I? No, no. Just call the, the broker. Just fat arrow this, fat arrow it, the whole thing. Oh yeah, it's in the it's in the broker, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, dude, you built it. Dude. You built that broker. <laughs> it's, it feels like an age away. Like I wrote the code and I still have no I, idea. I, I mean, it does take some time. Get SQL, pass in the expression, done. Do me a favor and just do this dot SQL query broker, just for all intents and purposes. So, question Run. here. Yeah. Right. Because this is pretty much a um, where's the test? I guess this is more of a, a philosophical thing, right? You use this all the time. Or... I use it. I use it with private class members. Right. Private class members only, because that's so you'll see a lot of people put underscore, and that's wrong. You know, they they got it all wrong. You know. Why have I got so many failing ones? Just, just, just click on I... the just click on the blue thing. You have a blue this little blue mark on top of your it's message. Near, isn't it? Yeah, here we go. It's passing. That's it. Mark it as pass. Nice. And call it a day. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, what was the test name? This one. <laughs> here we go. Fat arrow. Look at that. See, look at me getting it all right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you happy? Or do you want a thin arrow? Oh my god. You know I'm just checking. <laughs> oh my god. All it's right. It's the let, arrow there, isn't it? Listen, Wednesday, let's do the validations and the exception handling of this. And we yeah. should be and the game would be a foot. Okay, my friend. Yeah. Hey, again, thank you, sir, for your participation. That's all right. Okay. I do want to catch up with you after this one though, if you've got five minutes. Yeah, let me let me just talk to this nice dude behind me here for a second, and then I'll I'll call you back, okay? No worries, man. All, All right, right, good sesh. All right, my friend, thank you so much. <laughs> Where is the thing? There it is. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye. <laughs>